Hi, I'm Jacob Beningo, and I'm an Embedded Systems Consultant. And today I wanted to talk with you for about five minutes on how we can build our very own isolated USB to UART converter in about 20 minutes for not much more than $20. Now you may be asking yourself, why would I actually want to build an isolated USB to UART converter in the first place? And there's a couple of reasons why you'd want to. Uh, the first is that a lot of times as Embedded Systems developers, we're going to be working on a board that isn't tested. We're going to be connecting it to a very expensive laptop. And there's a potential if we're using the same power between, or we're using our laptop to power the device, uh, it's possible that if something goes wrong on the, in the physical electronics, that we could end up damaging our laptop. There's also the potential that if something interesting happens on our laptop, we could end up damaging our hardware as well, our electronic hardware. So by isolating the two, the two powers, we can basically protect each system. I can protect my laptop by having it on its own power, and I can protect my circuit board, which is on its own separate power then at that point. Uh, there's also other reasons that we may want to do this. For example, if you're developing a battery-operated device, uh, having a ground connection through a PC down to AC power lines that's actually grounded as part of the power grid, that could cause uh, ground loops or other interesting phenomena that perhaps our system or our sensors won't actually behave the same way as they do when we're plugged into a laptop as they would if we disconnect the laptop and just run the device completely on its own battery power. Uh, so those are a couple different reasons why we want an isolated U, uh, USB to UART converter. And what we'll do here uh, is just briefly go through how we can go ahead and build this guy. So uh, basically what we're going to talk about, there's seven simple steps that we can follow to actually build this uh, USB to UART isolator. Uh, the first one that we'll talk about is how we actually select the isolator we want to use. Then we'll go through, we'll f talk about gathering all our hardware together. Then how we can actually assemble the isolator board. So we're going to end up with a couple of different boards. We're going to end up with a USB to UART uh, converter, which is just kind of stand standalone off-the-shelf part. Then we're going to go and actually get this isolator IC. We're going to put it on a board. Then we're going to add some uh, breakout headers to each of the boards so that we can put the two together. Then we'll what we'll end up with uh, in step five is a final USB UART converter that's got isolated power that has this isolator on it, and uh, it'll allow us then to power. Uh, the isolator side or the uh, UART converter side and uh, what we'll do then in step six is I'll walk you through how to actually perform test setup and then in step seven we will actually perform some testing on the finally assembled converter. Alright so step one selecting an isolator. Now basically what I've done is I went through and I, I, I found a nice little isolator that's it's pretty useful pretty handy it's a Silicon Labs SI8421BB uh, DIS. Basically what this isolator does is it's, a, it's an isolator that, it's not an opto-isolator, which is, which is pretty cool because it's a, uh, optical isolators tend to be very limited on their, their baud rate, on, on how, much, uh, how, mon how much data you can actually push through them. Usually it's limited to like 100K, a lot of times even less than that. This is actually an RF, this particular part is an RF transmitter isolator. So what you end up with is the ability to transmit data at up to 150 megabits per second uh, if you use this per exact particular part. And what this is basically going to do is it's going to provide us with uh, 2.5 kilovolts of isolation between our uh, between our, our converter and the actual electronics that we're trying to communicate with. So what we end up with is a transmitter on one side so we might have our UART transmitter and uh, it's going to be isolated here over this barrier. There's going to be some radio waves that are generated. Uh, then the receiver side is going to receive it, demodulate it, and then it's going to provide uh, standard whatever, whatever power level we want, 3.3 volts or 5 volts. It will then uh, allow the other side, you know, our, our actual electronic hardware, to receive the data. The cool thing about this package is that it actually does have two isolators on it. So if you're thinking of uh, you know, bi-directional communication where you have a transmitter and a receiver, we can actually do that with this chip. And the nice thing about this exact part number is that it actually lines up perfectly to use a, a SparkFun uh, breakout board that's uh, the USB to, uh, to UART isolator. And the, the, what's even better is that it's actually very inexpensive. It's $1.46 uh, per isolator. So if you want to build two or three of them, it's not really going to break your budget. It's very inexpensive. Compared to off-the-shelf USB to UART uh, converters, which can cost hundreds of dollars uh, if you're buying them off-the-shelf already pre-assembled. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so step two. Uh, basically what we want to do is we want to go out and we want to buy the different parts to build our USB to UART isolator. Uh, the one that I recommended is a SparkFun uh, breakout board for USB to UART. It goes for about $14.95. These are, you know, most likely you already have one in your in your parts bin, so you may not even have to go out and buy them. They're pretty common, uh, especially among you know makers and 
um, you know, other hobbyists, but I've also seen them all over the place, even in, uh, you know, production type environments uh, and in development environments. We're going to want an SOIC breakout board, which you can also get from SparkFun. Basically, this is just this 8-pin breakout board that we're going to put the, the isolator on. We're going to end up soldering the isolator here and then breaking out the pins using the, uh, the breakout board. Then we're going to need 8-pin uh, headers, so just a hundred thousandth. Uh, you can get these as well at SparkFun. The, the area where we end up having to break from ordering parts from SparkFun is for the actual isolator itself. You can get these at DigiKey or Jamco. Uh, and this here is a, just a simple image of uh, what that isolator looks like. So it's a little 8-pin eight, eight eight SOIC that we're going to solder on this board here. We're going to then solder these uh, headers out on the here, solder headers out on the, the, the breakout board for the USB to UART. And then we're going to sandwich these two together. At the end of the day, we're going to have an isolated USB to UART converter. Keep in mind that uh, the Silicon Labs part, uh, if you look at the data sheet, it does say that's not recommended for new designs. Uh, this really isn't a new design. All we're doing is looking for parts that are off the shelf, that are inexpensive, that you know there's thousands of them uh, available in quantity if you just go to the store and buy them right now. We're not looking to put this into production. So you know, using a part that isn't recommended for new designs is still okay in this very quick do-it-yourself type of environment. So once we've gathered all our parts together, we can go through and, you know, the third step is just to start the assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our isolator, we're going to put it on the SparkFun breakout board for the uh, 8 pin SOIC. Usually what you do when you're uh, going to solder something like this on, we're going to put a little bit of solder here on, on one pin. We're going to move our SOIC into place, solder it uh, to the board here so that that way now we've got an anchor. Then we can go through and start touching each individual one of these pins until we've soldered all eight of them. You may want to go back and then uh, you know just retouch up pin one just to make sure that we do have a good solid connection. But once that's done, you've basically completed step three, which is just putting the SOIC onto the isolator board. Once we've done that, we want to install the headers, the four pin headers. Pretty straightforward, once again, for the SparkFun uh, USB, the UART breakout board. We're going to actually put the four pins right here at the very end of the board, directly across from the USB connector. The reason we do that, these are the actual pins that we want. So this pin right here is ground. You've then got uh, transmit, receive, and 3.3 volts. Uh, the solder mask here is a little obscured from this angle, so definitely make sure that uh, you know the, that you know which pins are which there. But it looks like this is transmit, that's receive. What we're going to end up doing is you're going to want to look at your data sheet, and if you install that this exact part onto this board, then this is exactly the way you'd want to do it. But you, what you'll want to do is make sure that your the pins for your transmit isolator and your receive isolator actually do correspond to the transmit and receive pins here so that when you take this board and you sandwich it on there and solder it on that all the pins actually line up in the correct direction. So basically you want the transmitter side to be on the transmitter side of the SOIC or of the uh, the isolator and that the receive is on the receive side. Uh, then that way all the through paths are, you know, the, the isolators are unidirectional so we don't get bidirectional communication through just a single pin. So you do have to wa watch for alignment there. But if you set it up just like this, uh, with pin one corresponding to pin one, uh, you, won't, you shouldn't have any problems. Finally, what we're going to do is we're go just going to assemble the two boards together. So we're just going to drop this guy straight, the isolator board straight down onto the uh, SparkFun USB to UART converter. And this is just a little FTDI uh, 232 uh, chip that's on this breakout board. What we do then here is we've got ground aligned here, receive, transmit, 3.3 volts, which then means when we go to hook this guy up, you're going to connect. Uh, so what ends up happening is, is one side of the isolator, when you plug in this USB converter, this side is automatically going to be powered already. So you're going to have 3.3 volt power right here already on the transmit side. So we're already going to be powered on this side of our isolator. What you will need to do is power the other side of the isolator. So right now, just hanging out like this, it's not actually powered. We're going to have to take the power from our circuit board or our device that's under test, and we're then going to have to line up and put power here. This could be 3.3 volts. It could be 5 volts as well. Uh, we're going to put our ground here, and then we're going to have our receive and transmit lines uh, here as well. So these just line up. So actually, so this is the transmit side. So this is transmit. This is going to be receive over here. This is receive side here, so our transmitter would connect there. We now have isolated power because we basically have a line going through here where there is 2.5 kilovolts worth of isolation on our board. So if we actually went through, we can set this up. Uh, as I mentioned, as I plug this USB power in here, we've now powered one side of the isolator. I can have power here 
uh, running into the board. I've got a ground line here running in. And then for a simple test, all I've done is connected the transmit and receive pins together so that I get a UART loop back. And if we've soldered everything properly and connected it, we can then open up our favorite terminal, uh, look for the port that we're connected to. I can select the baud rate. Uh, basically, this particular chip's good up to 150 megabits per second. Uh, I was using real term and it maxes out at about 921, 600 baud. So what I did is I maxed it out as fast as I could. I just started typing on my keyboard into the window and cool beans, I've got an isolated uh, USB to UART converter. And now, uh, you know, very quickly in about 20 minutes, I've, uh, you know, assembled this, this useful converter that will help protect my laptop. It will help protect uh, my electronic equipment that I might be testing. And it will also make sure that I've got two completely isolated grounds so that uh, my electronic equipment is not accidentally being grounded in some unexpected manner. Maybe perhaps making me think that I have a circuit board that's working when it's really not, uh, which can be great uh, when we're trying to do debugging. So the question is, um, you know, where do you go from here? This is a very quick, short video where I just briefly walk through everything. Uh, what you can do is uh, on my website at www.beningo.com. If you go to the main website, look under blogs, prototyping, you can see also another article that walks through these individual steps, talks a little bit more about uh, what's going on in the background. You can also look on uh, edn.com. There's some articles there as well. If you are interested in embedded systems in general, embedded software development, there's also some useful resources on the website that you'll find there. Uh, I also have a monthly newsletter called Embedded Bytes that goes through and shows techniques like this for, for hardware, but also different techniques for learning how to uh, learning how to develop software for embedded, uh, you know, if you're developing embedded C, uh, C code, as well as how you can write uh, you know, robust and, re and reliable uh, embedded software. Mostly focused around using uh, the C language, but also using MicroPython and some other uh, interesting languages as well. So I uh, appreciate your time and attention. And uh, if you, know, you have questions or, or comments, please, you know, please feel free to uh, drop them here on the website or reach me uh, at jacobatbeningo.com. Here's a QR code and also a link uh, for that Embedded Bytes newsletter that I mentioned previously, along with some other information and ways you can interact with me on social media. So thanks again for your time and attention. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to having you uh, have well-protected hardware that is uh, uh, isolated now. All right, thanks.